Let's just do this, shall we? My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we're going to start doing some of the mathematics and all that crap. So we're doing a uh, crankshaft angle to a uh, piston stroke. So, what we need to do is, we need to we need a wave, we have an input. Our input, and our only input, is uh, the crank angle. If we know the crank angle, then we can work out on any engine where our piston should be. Um, and this is important because this can actually give you graphs of motion. So what we're trying to do is we're going to use something called kinematics. Uh, kinematics, which in layman's terms is the study of the motion of things generally in two dimensions. That's the label, ish. Um, but it's without forces and stuff involved and all the rest of it. So we're show it's kinna as in um, kinetic energy and matics obviously because it's um, a motion thing. So it's kinematics. That's a horrible explanation but let's just go with it anyway. So what we have is we'll have a piston and we'll use um, a point drawing here because that's easier. We have our crank, we have our central pivot, we'll have where our uh, big end is and then we have our con rod. So that's really all we need. So what we need is the um, the circular path of our big end, which we will call R because that's our radius from the center. Don't get me wrong, this isn't the crank webs and not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the center of the crank pin and the motion that it traces out. Um, we're also looking at this from our gudgeon pin, but whatever displacement our uh, wrist pin, gudgeon pin, whatever displacement that has, the top of the piston has the same displacement. So, the other thing we need to know, and you might say, yeah, but I don't know that. Well, that's weird because you're going to be understanding the motion of the engine that you're designing. So, you should know your rod length. How do you determine your rod length? Well, that's quite simple. You just measure from the middle of there to the middle of there and you have your, your rod length. It's from uh, small end to big end, big end to small end, whichever way you want to do it. So, that's our L, that's our length our radius here and then what we're going to do is we're going to trace an imaginary line through uh, which generally most of the time you've got to be careful here generally this is your center line for your cylinder if you have to sack cylinders then it is not so then you have to take that into consideration and if someone asks for it I'll do the video on that but fucking hell not the sacks in cylinders I mean the mathematics behind it um, so we've got this imaginary line that goes through and basically what we're trying to work out is just say our wrist pin was there and now it's there we're working out that distance there which we'll call S which is our stroke you know what I mean Where it, it used to be there and now it's there how much has that moved in relation to our angle so then we have to add our angle let's make that solid because that's going to get confusing let's move that so R is there then we use uh, phi which is our angle like that so that's our crank angle. So now we've got all this, there's only one other thing we really need to know and that's our, uh, what we call our crank ratio. Our crank ratio is our radius um, over our uh, length. So, and we usually use uh, lambda to signify that. So that's R over L, like that. So that's what we call our crank, our crank ratio. 60% of the time, it works every time. Right then, so I've had to rub it all off and move it along. But we've got our basics here, we've still got our thigh, we've still got our R and our L. And then we've still got our... Let me just get rid of the title, Jesus Christ, that'll give me a lot more room. Uh, so, what we've got is we've got our uh, crank ratio, we've been through this, but I'm just going to quickly put it. That's our crank ratio, which is our lambda which is our R over L. Right then, so what we've got here basically is we've got um, uh, some trigonometry to work out. So if we just pick our points like this, we can split this in two like this. So we've got two right angle triangles. Great, that makes it a lot easier. So then we've got our uh, thigh there, we've got R, we've got L, we know these. And then we've got, this will be our R cosine, 
at cosine. See, I'm writing cosine. Cos, you fucking dickhead. Jesus Christ. I'm not a maths teacher, as you can tell. So we've got our cosine there, which means that this will be our, our sine there. And then this... <laughs> let me work this out. This will be L squared. And that'll be minus our R sine squared square rooted. Because the square of the square of the square of the square. So once you put all this shit together, God, I fucking lost I love mathematics. Don't you? It's great fun. Um, I'll leave that up there. Yeah, fuck it, we can do it with that. So once you've got this, you have S equals uh, shit. Ah, uh, one minus cos phi plus our um, phi over two, because that's our ratio, and then it'll be r. Uh, oh fuck! Now what was it? R sine squared. That's the one. So, now we've got all this, now I remember all that bit, I've just quickly jotted down um, how you express this out, because <laughs> like I say, maths isn't my fucking absolute forte, um, it isn't um, something I really enjoyed, but anyway, what did I put, so yeah, so your S equals your R plus L uh, minus your R cosine, one there and then you've got to minus that against your whole um, L squared minus R sine jobby but what you can do is obviously you can break all this down you know what I mean let's get rid of that actually now we've just got numbers we can just fucking crack on so the next thing we've got is how do you express this out S how do I do this R uh, 1 minus cos by plus L minus um, our L squared minus our R sine by <laughs> squared and all that is halved like so and then when you drag that out so you pull out your half get rid of your half and all the rest of it so it's S equals um, R 1 minus cosine and the reason why you do the 1 minus cosine is obviously because you're trying to split this into your two triangles um, like so take that out, get drop these squared so it's plus L minus L and then you'll have 1 fucking L fire 1 over 2 R over L sine phi like that. I'm missing loads of steps here, obviously. That, and then once you've finished doing that, you get, you can break this down even more. So we've got our first bit here, which is the good bit. This is our first section. That's our first bit that we were really interested in. Um, And then what you want to do is you want to drag all this shit out and get rid of all these um, R over L. That's your lambda. You want to get your, your one and your minus halves and all the rest of it. You want to get rid of all that shite. Uh, and you've got a plus and a minus the same thing here. So you want to try and get rid of that. So what you end up with is you end up putting an L over 2. Because you bring that over. And then you've got that times an R squared over L squared uh, sine squared phi like that and then obviously what you do is you go around you cross that out you cross that out and you shift your two over so now all you've got really is you can shift this R up there you've got an R left over and R over L is your lambda which is your conrod angle so you end up with this uh, your crank angle sorry phi um, plus your phi over 2 times your r sine squared 
thigh, like that. And bingo, you have it. So let me just fucking scribble all that shit off. Um, and then I'll show you the equation. Keep those doggies rolling raw hard. I'll keep myself entertained, don't I? So, we have our piston, we have our rod, we have our centre line, oh. we have our crank pin circle, there, we have this, we have this, so this is our, this is thigh, this is L, and that is all you need to know when you want to work out your stroke. Now there is another way of doing this, and we'll do a video on the other way of doing this. Um, and I just thought I'd show you. That's all my scribblings of fucking expressing it out. <laughs> and basically what you end up with is S equals R uh, times uh, 1 minus cos of the phi of the angle uh, plus your lambda over 2 am I running out of room here? R uh, sine uh, phi squared job done that's the one in it no 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 wrong what am I doing? there we go so what does all this fucking mean? it means that if you get this thigh here and you plug in 46 degrees your crank angle now if you are going to do this by Excel Excel does not like degrees Excel likes radians and radians what is it 57.23 something I can't fucking remember um, degrees per radian if you put I can't remember what the fucking thing is if you put in brackets Oh, is it 60 and then degrees, you've got to write degrees, it works out for you or something, I can't really remember, I did it ages ago, <laughs> but yeah, uh, look up how to put, um, how to, there's a conversion in Excel, and I'm going to do it soon and show you um, the difference between uh, rod relationships to crank relationships piston acceleration stuff like that now the beauty about this is all the rest of it you know your radius you know your lambda is r over l you know what i mean so your lambda is equals r over l that's what you do and uh yeah you, you just plug in the numbers and away you go this will be a ratio so this gives you a number it's usually 0 point something three something whatever depending on what obviously these two lengths are um, but basically what it means is you can plug in any uh, angle crank angle and you can repeat this as many times as you want every degree or every whatever and it will give you a um, graph and I'll just plug up a graph now here's a graph of what it looks like so you can see you've got um, so that stroke versus crank angle and I'm going to show you what happens when you change that backwards and forwards and the good thing about doing it this way is it's very easy and we'll do the videos about that it's very easy to add um, uh, velocity and acceleration it's very easy to add velocity acceleration once you learn one one if you do it this way you know because at the end of the day all you've got to do is just add angular angular velocity and a few other bits and pieces but you can quite easily work out what the accelerations are and the um, velocities which is also just as important and how changing this relationship changes the numbers I'll do a lot of that obviously on Excel because I can only just show you the straight maths on here there is another way of doing this working at crank angle it's in a sense it's easier um, ish I don't like it I prefer this way um, you know, when we go to school, you're basically just given this, you're shown the expression once it's a, um, oh, binomial expression, um, which means that it's only a first order. <laughs> That's the thing you can, but for stuff like this, it's like using pi to like 15 decimal places. It's not something you need. Anyway, I hope that all makes sense. 
Uh, we'll do some more, like I say, we'll do the accelerations, we'll do the velocities, we'll do angular, angular momentum, we'll do torque, we'll do um, pressure, temperatures, and all sorts. Uh, kind of based on stuff like this. Uh, as soon as you learn this stuff, and as soon as I've done these videos, there's really not much more to it. There's some video, you know, there's some more mathematics about it then gets into oscillations and stuff I don't really I'm dreading how I'm going to put that video together I'm not a maths teacher so my ex explanation of expressing equations isn't very good as you can tell hope that makes sense and I'll see you in a bit